Welcome back to another episode of Hawk TV. We've got a lot of new stories for you this week, so don't go anywhere. Hawk TV starts now. Welcome back. I'm Autumn Williams. Starting off this week, the cold weather couldn't keep students from dressing up and showing their school spirit. House TV reporter Kaylee Gurr has the latest for us on the homecoming week. Last week was homecoming week for our school, and though students showed their school's pride, things didn't go quite as planned. Monday was dressed in all the same color head to toe. Tuesday was anything but a boot bag day, and students had very interesting items they brought, ranging from strollers to pots and even trash cans. Wednesday was dressed as your relationship status with pink for single, red for taken, and white for it is complicated. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to enjoy our last two dress up days for homecoming, which were meant to be college day and spirit day. Our homecoming was cut short due to weather concerns with students and teachers staying home both Thursday and Friday. The weather concerns also required the homecoming days itself to be moved from Friday to Saturday. Rico saying we'll have the final results of those games later in the show. For Hawk TV, I'm Kaylee Greer. Back to you. Thank you, Kaylee. With less than a semester left for our seniors, it's time to look towards the future. Hawk TV reporter Lily Ramirez spoke with two seniors making big plans. A college channel was held at Southside on Tuesday, February 8th for two of our very own seniors, Kim Anderson and Charlie Hartshaw. Both signed to play football at Lane College in front of family, friends, and coaches. Cam Anderson says it's not only a great opportunity to further his education and play a sport he loves, but it's made that much better knowing one of his high school teammates will be by his side. I feel good knowing that I'm going to college to play football with one of my brothers. Uh, it was emotional because I didn't think, well, a lot of people said that I wasn't going to make it far. Cam Anderson and Charlie Hartshaw have played together the past four years at Southside, so for them to be able to move forward to a new chapter of their life and continue to play together means a lot to them. I feel good to play for my city and play with Cam Anderson. I've been playing for the last four years and we ain't finished yet. Congratulations to Cam and Charlie. Your Hawk family is proud. For Hawk TV, I'm Liliana Ramirez. Thank you, Lily. Speaking of school events, our school play took place last week, but it's not forgotten. Hot City reporter Hayden Ward spoke with students and teachers on what they thought of our theater department's most recent play. Wait Until Dark has finally left the theater, and now some students in Southside may want to know more about the show and its production, or what the people involved had to say about it. Director and teacher at Southside, Liana Cargill, has this to say about her involvement in the production and the show. It was interesting. Um, we have never done a show that was a true thriller before. We've done murder mysteries. We've done like war dramas before. So we've, we've done some things that have some weight, that have some seriousness to them, but we've never done a show where the goal was more or less to freak the audience out. So <laughs> that was so much fun. Um, I'm so grateful that I had the cast that I had. I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't had the people that I did. So I just thank God that he brought me and Ashley and a Corwin and a, and a Hayden and a, and a Chris. And uh, yeah, we've done some things that are darker in tone. Uh, we did The Crucible, which is a fairly dark story. We did Cato, which is a fairly dark story. The Mousetrap, which is a fairly dark story, but nothing with that level of effects. I'm really glad that we did Canterville Ghost last year because that gave us some good practice on how to manage all of the effects, all the sound and all the lights together. Uh, but no, nothing like this before, so this is a new one. I would say that this show really re-energized my passion for directing. Uh, it was really tough over COVID to not be able to do shows. And then when I got sick last semester and then having to push it off, it was really difficult to come back from that. But this doing the show and seeing the positive audience response to it really made me want to do, made me want to do more shows, made me want to keep going. So thanks to everybody who came and thanks to everybody who helped out with the show. Wait Until Dark is a tale about a blind lady, Susan Hendricks, who receives a doll from her husband that is said to be really important. It is so important that a man named Harry Rowe Jr. is desperate for it back. So desperate that he tries to con the woman for it back. Many audience members enjoyed the show, 
Jeffrey Evers, teacher of history on West Campus, saw the show and shared his thoughts. Uh, my first thought was that's a lot of lines to memorize. Um, the main character, I think she was played by Ashley, she had a lot of lines. But everyone did a, a great job. Um, everybody spoke, spoke clearly. I had some questions in the, in the beginning and some characters I was suspicious of, but the plot kind of revealed um, revealed everything in the end, so my questions were answered. It was great to see former students of mine in this production. Um, I always enjoy seeing students of mine doing productive things because you know, I see them in the classroom, but to see them in their element doing things that they like to do, I always enjoy. But what does the cast think about it? Cast member Cameron Burkhead, who plays Gloria in the show, shared her thoughts on being involved in it. Well, I've always enjoyed theater throughout the past three, past three years of my high school career, and in the past two shows that I've been cast in, I've played characters with similar attributes. So being cast as Gloria, who is a little kid who plays the upstairs neighbor, it was really a change in pace and an exciting thing to be cast as something new and different and allowed me to branch out in my theater experience. I think that if you want to do theater, don't hesitate to do it because throughout the past three years, since I'm a senior and I'm graduating this year, it was really fun for me to experience and you get to make new friends and i just like anybody to come and join. However, some roles are difficult to get into, including the actress who plays Susan Hendricks. Ashley Wortham. Well, firstly, I began to do my research on Susan as a character and the adaptation of the play as well. I began my analyzation of Susan as I read the script, so I just went with it and it came naturally. It was very difficult indeed. You're losing your main way of seeing, so you have to use your other senses, which is very challenging, at least for me. Um, for practice, I used a blindfold, and it was very, very difficult. If it wasn't help from the lights and sound, the show would miss key moments. Thanks to Clark Burkhead, one of the members who helped out with lights and sound, informs us on operating in the booth. Um, at first it was kind of hard, but I got the hang of it as we went on. Coordination and teamwork are two of the most important aspects of theater, especially when it comes to rehearsing. We go back to Ashley about her time in having to choreograph and rehearse the epic finale of Wait Until Dark. It felt so natural. Um, working with my co-star was an amazing experience. Um, he's very sweet and there were no problems. It was a lot to carry on at first. It got better and better and better. And the more better it got, the more fun it became. Southside Theater put their all into this production, just as they do in every other show. With another show possibly in the works before the end of the year, we are all hoping it is another amazing and successful show. What do you think it is? I do recommend going to see one of Southside Theater's productions at least once or twice to see what the fuss is all about. You won't regret it. That's all for me this time, Hawk Nation. I'll be back soon with more news around the nest. This is Hayden Ward. Back to you. Thank you, Hayden. If you're interested in being a part of a school play, now is your chance. High City reporter Ethan O'Brien tells us how we can sign up for the upcoming play and what to expect. Calling all actors, it's time to prepare for the stage. Theater teacher Miss Leanna Cargill has announced there will be one more play this school year. The theater department plans to perform Little Women. This play is a story about the four March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. They live in Concord with their marmy during the Civil War, filled with adventure heartbreak, and a deep sense of hope. The struggle of these little women to find their own voices mirrors the growing pains of a young America. The show is expected to open April 7th with shows through April 9th. There are still roles available in the play. Ms. Cargill tells us what you can expect for auditions. Well, the auditions are going to be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, people are going to come here. Usually they do a monologue, but we decided to cut those for this show. They'll come in up here to the stage, take a seat in one of these seats, and cold read for the play. Uh, I'm, I'll be looking for who reads well together, who's got a good grasp on the character. I'll be looking for confident stage presence, and we'll see. We'll see who gets the part. So excited. It's going to be a great show. If you would like to participate in the play, stop by the theater in the Fine Arts Building for a sign-up form. So mark it on your calendar and prepare for another great show. For Hawk TV, I'm Ethan DeBryan. Thanks, Ethan. 
Let's take a break from our school stuff for a minute. Are you looking for something for your sweetheart this Valentine's Day? Hot TV reporter Madison Moore has some news on a Valentine's Day pop-up for us. Woodstock Bake Shop is hosting Valentine's Day pop-up. It will start today and last until Valentine's Day. Woodstock Bake Shop opens at 7 a.m. and closes at 6 p.m. They have many delicious sweets to choose from as well. Make sure to stop by and get something for your Valentine. Thank you, Madison. There are plenty of other businesses ready to help you spoil your loved ones this Valentine's weekend. Magnolia Manor and Chapel will host a five-course meal for Valentine's Day, including potato soup and beef wellington, but it will cost you. The dinner for two is priced at $210 per couple. Tickets are available for tonight and Saturday night only. Brooke Shaw's Old Country Store is once again hosting their special Valentine's Day dinner at the historic Providence House. Dinner will be started at 5.30 and 7.30 on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. These tickets are quite expensive, but they will cost you $125 per couple. If you want to attend, you need to book your reservation today. The Double Tree in Jackson has a deal for you. The hotel is offering a Valentine's Romance package this weekend. The package includes dinner for two and tickets to see the play on Golden Pond by the Escalier Theater Company. The package is for tomorrow night only and will cost you $98. To make your reservation, call the Double Tree Hotel. And the Jackson Symphony is preparing to host its My Funny Valentine concert in celebration of the world's most loved songs. The event will take place tomorrow night from 7.30 to 9 at the Carl Perkins Civic Center. If you're going, you're quite lucky since the event sold out earlier this week. If a Valentine's outgoing isn't your idea of fun, we have some other events for you. The Rockabilly has something planned soon. The Rockabilly Residency will feature Lola's dynamic live band joined by horn and string sections. Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Lola celebrated her hometown's Rockabilly roots with the release of her new album, X in December, which debuted at number one on the iTunes Blues chart. February 11th is a final residency performed and the official album release party celebrating X. The show is at Hub City Brewing and starts at 6 p.m. Two show tickets are $35 and three show tickets are $45. Another event is also taking place. There's a mystery at Elk Lodge. The Jackson Elks Lodge 192 will host Dying for Chocolate, a murder mystery dinner on Friday, February 25th and Saturday, February 26th. The cost of the event is $25 per ticket. Proceeds will benefit the Hospice House Fund of the West Tennessee Healthcare Foundation. Entrance is in the back of the building with overflow parking across the street. The event will begin at 6 p.m. on both dates. Back to school. It's now time to introduce our Senior of the Week. Our Senior of the Week is Lauren Woods. Lauren is a member of the Beta Club. Outside of school, she goes to work, hangs with friends, and eats. Her favorite basketball game is her sophomore year against Haywood. Her favorite teacher is Mr. Reed because he takes the time to actually listen when things are going on and he's so supportive of all of his students. Her favorite class was choir and AV. What she would miss most about high school is seeing the people that she talked to because we were all going different ways after graduation. The advice she gives to underclassmen is not to think that just because you are friends with people your freshman year that you're going to be friends with them through your senior year and stay focused on your work. In 20 years, she plans to see herself being a very successful woman accomplishing her goals and living life to the fullest. Next on our list, Hot TV reporter Cortland Martin has some news for us on the open house and parent teacher conferences coming up. If you've been interested in attending Southside or a particular class, now's your chance to see what that's all about. There will be an open house here at Southside on February 17th. The open house will be a way for middle schoolers who are getting ready to transition to high school to decide which school they want to attend. Our open house will mainly feature our classes in the Tech Prep Building and Fine Arts. Parent-teacher conferences will be held at the same time as the open house, giving parents a chance to speak with teachers and check on their students' progress as well. Both events will take place from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Because of these events, the 17th will be a half day for students, and students will not come to school the 18th as teachers have a personal development day. This means an extra long weekend for the students. Then the following Monday, it's President's Day giving the students and teachers another day off. We hope you are all looking forward to a long weekend. For Hawk TV, I'm Cortland Marr. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Cortland. It's now time to take a look at how our basketball teams are doing. Hawk TV sports reporter Enrico Sane has the latest.
We start sports this afternoon with a look at our Hawks and Lady Hawks basketball teams are faring. Let's jump right in. Our teams took on Northside Indians at home Saturday night for our homecoming game. The game was originally scheduled for Friday, but rescheduled due to weather concerns. The girls played first, taking a sweep victory with a final score of 82 to 13. Then our boys came through with another win as well, beating Northside 63 to 57. This came no surprise to many of us, even the Associated Press. The AP released its boys and girls statewide basketball rankings earlier last week, where they ranked our boys team the number one in the 3A, and our Lady Hawks followed close behind in the number two spot. So what's next for our basketball teams? Our teams will now move on to the district tournament starting February 17th, right here at home. The girls will play against the number two South Gibson on February 17th at 7.30 for the championship game. But the games will start even earlier than that with Northside and Liberty battling it out for third place starting at six. Our boys will open the boys tournament on the February 18th as they take on the number four Liberty at six. After number two, South Gibson, and number three, Northside, will hit the court. The boys' championship game won't be played until Monday, February 21st. That's all for the sports. We wish the best of luck for our Hawks and Lady Hawks. Back to you. Thank you, Rico. Having a Netflix subscription should give you more gaming options on your phone. And how can you get the new Horizon game for even cheaper? Hot reporter Clifford Watson is back this week with the answers. Hey Hawks, Clifford Walton here with your gaming news. We received recent reports that Sony is buying Bungie. Bungie is a gaming company that is the developer of Destiny and the original creator of Halo. Sony will reportedly be buying Bungie for $3.6 billion, but Bungie will continue to be a multi-platform independent studio and publisher. Just while sitting alongside the company's PlayStation Studio developers. In other news, Valve has announced the Steam Deck will go on sale starting February the 25th. The Steam Deck is a portable gaming console that you can play senior Steam games on from anywhere with internet access. The Steam Deck will have three versions available, ranging from $399 to $650. So get ready for the option to have all your games in the palm of your hand. Well, almost all of them. It seems some problems are already arising. Epic Games has announced they don't plan on updating Fortnite to make it run on the new Steam Deck. CEO Tim Sweeney says they don't feel confident in their ability to combat cheating in Fortnite while it runs on such a console. But that doesn't mean you won't be able to play Fortnite on on the Steam Deck at all, it just means you won't be able to find it in the Steam Store. Fortnite players will still have the option to download Windows on the Steam Deck and get to their game there. For my mobile gamers, it's even better Fortnite news. Fortnite is returning to the iPhone. As you know, Fortnite hasn't been available on iPhones ever since Apple yanked it from the Apple Store in 2020. However, Navita is changing that. You can now play Fortnite on your iPhone through the Navita's G4. Can't find that website you know you were on three weeks ago? Google has a new tool for for that. Google Chrome is rolling out Journeys. The new feature lets you revisit your old search history in a new way. It allows you to type in a word related to what you have searched before and see all the sites you have been to related to that search. The Journeys page will even prioritize your search history based on how long you spend on each site. If you're not a fan of this new feature, no worries. Google says you can delete specific sites in your journey, erase chunks of your history, or just turn the feature off altogether. With a little work, you can save on an upcoming game. If you're planning on buying Horizon Forbidden West, listen up. Buying the digital PS4 version can save you money. Though Sony's website doesn't state it, PlayStation boss Jim Ryan has said those who purchase the game on PS4 will be able to upgrade it to the PlayStation 5 version for free. The PlayStation 5 digital copy of Sony's website is currently selling for $69-99. However, the digital copy on PlayStation 4 is $59-99. So if you buy from the Sony website and purchase the PS4 version, you can save $10 and receive a free upgrade. Also, Horizon Forbidden West will release on February 18th. Did you know you could miss out on League of Legends' new spinoff without a Netflix subscription? Netflix has announced that it is adding two new titles to its list of mobile games, Dungeon Dwarfs and Hextech Mayhem. Dungeon Dwarfs is an idle dungeon crawler where you can control a party of five dwarves to be 
beat down walls and monsters as they attempt to reclaim their home. While Hextech Mayhem is the League of Legends spinoff featuring characters and locals from the popular MOBA. Both games are free to play on iPhone and Android, but only if you have a Netflix subscription. It's sad to say, but another game is being delayed until next year. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was scheduled to come out sometime this year, but it strangely wasn't included in the 2020 to 2022 game lineup. The first trailer for the game was just released in December, making it seem like the game was close to being done, but now it won't come out until sometime next year. Warner Brothers has other games, however, coming out this year though, including Gotham Knights and Hogwarts Legacy. That's all for your gaming news. For Halt TV, I'm Clifford Walton. Thank you, Clifford. Looking for some new reads? How about a blind date with the book? It's an old event that hasn't been done in years, but Mrs. Parnell is bringing it back. Here's how it works. Books all available for the blind date are wrapped up so you can't see what they are. Each book gives you a hint of what it's about, listing its genre, who is recommended for it, and the very first line of the book. You pick one on that may interest you. Check it out and get to open it. Is it true love or is it a dud? You'll have to read to um, find out for yourself. But you know what, if, if it's a dud, the books won't be offended. It'll be okay. You can come back and try again. There is a card attached to the back of each book for you to write how interesting it was once you're done reading it. So don't forget to give it a rating before you return it. If you're interested in giving it a try, stop by the school library to check out your options. Last on our list today, new movie releases. Hot TV reporter Kalia Purnell takes us to the box office for a sneak peek at the latest in theaters. That's right. There are plenty of great movies currently in the theaters that you don't want to miss and even more on the way. Let's take a look. If you're watching this thing, you know by now a huge problem is heading our way. An emergency meeting is being called at our usual place immediately. Free bagels. Get ready for another space adventure. Moonfall is about an unusual team taking an impossible mission to save humanity after a mysterious force knocked the moon from its orbit. In the movie, a NASA executive team up with a man from her past and a conspiracy theory on a mission to prevent the moon from crashing into the Earth. Moonfall came out in the theater just last week. This isn't funny, Amber. Would you like to play a game, Tara? Scream is back. The new movie takes place 25 years later in the quiet town of Woodsburg, California. A new killer has taken up the ghost face mask and is targeting a group of teenagers who soon take some old pros for help. The movie is a mix of old characters and new, but claims to not just be a remake. Scream is in the theaters now. Hi, my name is what? My name is who? My name is for those looking for a more kid-friendly movie, look no further. The creators of Despicable Me and the Minions is now bringing us Sing 2. Sing 2 follows the story of several animals they attempt to become famous, but each has their own challenges to face. And behind it all is a reclusive rock star holding everyone's faith in the balance. The sweet movie is a great reminder of the power of music and ability to heal us. Sing 2 is in the theaters now. The Master Chief was enhanced and trained for one purpose to win this war. He and the other Spartans are our only effective weapons against the Covenant. And finally, Halo fans won't have to wait much longer for the live action series. Paramount Plus has released two new trailers on the Halo live action series. One of the new trailers give us a first look at the Master Chief AI assistant Cortana as well as the Elites. You can see the series for yourself starting March 24th, but be warned, it's a Paramount Plus exclusive, meaning you'll be looking at paying for a new streaming service. That's all for the week movie release. I'm Kalia Parnell, back to you. Thank you, Kalia. Sally, that was our last story of the day. I'm Autumn Williams for Hawk TV. We hope you have a great weekend, and remember, it's a great day to be a hawk.